We're turning food waste into free biogas. It gives us up to two hours of clean burning cooking fuel per day. The only byproduct being organic liquid fertilizer for the garden. This entire process is due to this right here, the methane digester. Besides providing us with sustainable cooking fuel and liquid organic fertilizer, this has another function that saved us about $20,000, the home biogas toilet. So by the end of this video, hopefully I'll have it figured out and I'll give you all a live demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Before we explore how the methane digester works, let's define what is biogas. Biogas is a renewable energy produced through anaerobic digestion, where organic matter breaks down without oxygen. It mainly consists of methane and carbon dioxide. Methane's combustibility makes biogas valuable, allowing it to generate heat, electricity, or even vehicle fuel. Capturing and burning methane from biogas reduces greenhouse emissions by converting methane into CO2 and water vapor, since methane is 25 times more potent at warming than CO2. Let's get this methane digester fired up. We'll explain the process and then we'll get cooking on today's meal of pork chops, apples, and onions. It takes a one-time activation of animal manure, specifically herbivore, to get the methanogens working to produce methane gas. All right, so we're on our way to get some cow poop from the methane digester. A few little questions. Why does it have to be cow manure? And why does it have to be fresh? It doesn't have to be cow manure. It could be another herbivore's manure. Let's see, goat manure. You can use horse manure. You, you can even use pig manure because pigs are omnivores, so they're eating all types of things. You need the methanogens that are from an herbivore or omnivore's gut. That's what breaks down the food waste into methane and then liquid fertilizer. As far as fresh, you want all the microbes to be alive and well. You get that in fresh, sloppy manure. The fresher the better. Being the cameraman pays off sometimes. <laughs> Honestly, after you've been in the cubicle long enough, this is kind of nice. So we are getting some dirt and a little leaf debris. It's kind of impossible to miss it, but you do want to avoid as much of that as you can for your methane digester manure. We're gonna be cooking dinner in no time. In addition to the manure, you're gonna need 1,200 liters, roughly 300 gallons of water to activate this system. This is the water tank here. We use rainwater from on top of our cabin using our rainwater catchment system. That gives the environment for the methanogens to produce methane, and then you keep it topped off moving forward to produce your liquid fertilizer. Once you've got your manure and water mixed together in the slurry and all loaded into your methane digester, the activation period takes about three to six weeks based on your external temperatures. This methane digester, and any other really, needs an average temperature of about 68 degrees Fahrenheit to function properly. If it's too cold, the methanogens are gonna go dormant. If it's too hot, I don't know what problems that could entail, but we don't really have that issue. Methane digesters like it hot. So if it's in colder winter months, you'll wanna put a small greenhouse around this to keep the average temperature up higher. It's okay if you dip below 68 degrees Fahrenheit in the evenings, as long as your days are warmer to average out that temperature. How's it going, Joe? Going good. From food waste to cooking on methane gas, here's the whole process. First, you get your food waste from making meals in the kitchen. We take our bowl of food waste and we pour that into the sink part of the home biogas methane digester. The food waste then goes underwater in that slurry mixture, which is mimicking a swamp. The food waste is broken down by methanogens. The methanogens consume the sugars and the starches in the food waste and methane bubbles up from the lower chamber to the upper chamber. There in the upper chamber, sandbags lean in and pressurize the methane at a low pressure point. This makes the system very safe. The methane then goes through a carbon filter to filter out any type of toxins so you've got clean burning methane fuel. The methane fuel is then pushed through the lines to the outdoor burner. The burner works just like a propane grill top, except it uses methane gas instead. The igniter lights the methane on fire and then you can cook food outdoors up to two hours per day on top of the grill top. Now, the liquid fertilizer or the effluent is going to escape out of a back tube on the back end of the methane digester. We then capture that in five gallon buckets to then fertilize our organic gardens. An optional hookup is the home biogas toilet. You can take this toilet, which is basically a marine toilet, connect the pump to a small water source, and then after you've used the toilet, pump the contents back into the methane digester. This is a really elegant flush toilet solution. And instead of using more manure from livestock to continue feeding the methane digester, you're using humanure. You do not have to use this optional setup. It's a great way to have an affordable septic tank 
One note, if you do connect the home biogas toilet, do not use the liquid fertilizer directly on most garden plants. You're gonna wanna run this into basically a leach field to then fertilize food forest, berry bushes, or something to where the actual leaves don't come into direct contact with the effluent. But once you're done, we won't have to rely on pigs or cows for our, you know, manure. It's a little horrifying. I get why people are squeamish, but you cannot deny how much money this saves versus a normal septic system. $20,000. And this is not a sponsored video. Like, no, but I think... it can be home biogas. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Joe Hildreth. On behalf of Acorn Land Labs, would you want to be a sponsor? <laughs> Just like the onion skins, the apple cores are going back in the methane digester to brew more fuel. That's what I love about this system. It's truly a circular system. See, we're steaming the crispy pork chops so they get nice and soggy. <laughs> I'm taking them off. I forgot a lid. I made a lid of pork chops. Yeah, because that makes sense. Those look good. Methane cooking gas for the win. Get you some biogas. Joe, Ben, and I are super passionate about off-grid systems because of the way they can give you a more affordable life, a life embedded more in nature, and just become more simplistic in how you live. It's a big shift from the way that Americans and many people in the West traditionally live, but I think it's a good direction to head. If you're going to be living off grid, if you're gonna use a methane digester like this, temperature matters, sunlight levels matter, your location matters in terms of land costs. There's a lot of factors that you really have to care about if you're gonna move off grid or start using more off grid to semi off grid systems. We put together a project of 50 PDFs and a few bonus PDFs of off-grid guides for all 50 states in the USA to analyze rainfall, land cost, temperature ranges, wild fire hazards, in addition to other natural disasters like hurricanes, earthquakes. Now, you'll find the basic rules are pretty consistent. There's a golden level for population density. You wanna aim for a sweet spot. There's a golden level for rainfall levels. Not too much, not too little. There's a sweet spot. And of course, land costs, as low as you can go within reason. So that's why we put all these off-grid guides together as an affordable way to steer more people towards better areas for simple, affordable, eco-friendly off-grid living. We hope you enjoy them. It's been a fun project for Joe, Ben, and I, and we're gonna keep cranking out more free content and more resources like these PDFs to help other people live more simply, get out in nature, and enjoy a more affordable lifestyle so they can focus on what really matters between friends, family, faith, and good food. Um, we problem here. We don't have all the parts. We left some of them back at the other land lab. So we can't actually put all this together, but there will be a part two for our number twos. <laughs> I'm really reaching now. <laughs>